Oh, my wheelie's on. Oh, it's quite nice. Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. I don't know where I am. I'm somewhere on the wrong side of the Pennines in Yorkshire somewhere. Um, <coughs> there's not enough air. Um, <laughs> but I've got a guide with me, somebody who lives over this side and knows the area. He's also got a YouTube channel. Darren, step in. Step into the frame. Hello. This is Darren and he's got a YouTube channel called Adventure Me and he does all this sort of, this is your patch in it. It is, this is where I, this is where I was born and grew up around here. This, this was my playground right here. So you're a true Yorkshireman? True Yorkshireman. So you put the milk in first before you make the tea? I did that this morning for yours. You yeah. did a bit, yeah, and I was a bit disgusted. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's going to show us round. We're going to look at a disused railway line. I'll be asking him what it is. So behind us is a massive, massive embankment. Um, look at that. I don't know if you can see that up there. Massive railway embankment. I've never seen anything like it in my life. So we'll be walking up there and taking the, uh, the track bed along there. Anyway, let's crack on and we'll get Darren to tell us what he knows about this line. When it gets up there, on the bridge, it then starts on the embankment. Right, so we're on the embankment. Um, where are we? Leeds. We're right in the middle, on the border of Leeds and Bradford. So there's a piece of countryside right in the middle, and that's where we are right now. Right, so we're between Leeds and Bradford. What is this line that we're on? So this is the Pudsey Ardsley railway line. Right. Now it ran all the way from Ardsley, which is just outside Wakefield. Yeah. And then all the way through to Pudsey in Leeds, just behind us. Right. With numerous okay. stations on there as well. When did it close? It closed in 1968. As a lot of them do, beaching was yeah. it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, okay. Same old, same old. This We're on this embankment, and as I showed you from down there, it is... You would, in, you would initially think it was a hill, wouldn't you? Yeah. Looking at it, you think, oh, it's the hill. But it's only since Darren's pointed it out that it's an, actually a railway embankment. You think, oh my God, how on earth did they build that? Was it the biggest? Well, it's uh, at the top. It's two tracks wide at the top. Yeah. But it's actually 116 feet high, we think. Right. And it's reputed to be the largest man-made railway embankment in Europe. Wow. So they say. Still. Still. Or has it been usurped? Maybe. Yeah, but it was the largest railway embankment in Europe. And, it's and I can see why. If you look off the edge here, it's just phenomenal. It's very steep. Yeah. Anyway, we're going to, we're, apparently we're going this way. Which way are we going towards here then? So we're heading that way, which is going to take us right to the mouth of the Greenside Tunnel. And then if you can get through the tunnel, you would have entered Pudsey right in the centre. So we're going towards Pudsey. Definitely. Right, let's crack home with it. and built by, obviously built back in the day, in the 1800s. Navvies. Navvies, yeah. I think, I mean, I'm always astounded at tunnels. Obviously fantastic things, but embankments, you never think of the embankments, do you? And what it, this was would have been a, a valley, and they've just laid down, obviously, a, a foundation, and built upon and built upon and built upon, and they've got this high. To set the, I suppose the alternative really would have been you wouldn't make you wonder why they didn't do a viaduct, yeah, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. The alternative, I suppose, would have been a viaduct. I would have thought there was probably less work in a viaduct. But there's some sort of story that uh, Darren knows about uh, somebody buying this um, embankment. Yeah, so <laughs> I was just telling Martin, it's, uh, there's a lot of Yorkshire stone used, not Lancashire stone, Yorkshire stone used in the foundation of the uh, embankment, and it's quite valuable these days. Yeah. So. A building company, a local building company, bought the embankment with the idea that they could quarry all the Yorkshire stone out of it and take it away. But when they bought it, they dropped a clangor and they found out that there's a green belt order slapped on this whole embankment and this valley, which would stop them touching the embankment altogether. So they bought an embankment that they can't do anything with. Yeah. When was this, do we know? It's quite recently. Really? Yeah, probably four or five years. So they're gonna, literally going to dig this out and take the stone away? Yeah, so they would, that would have been a bit of a... destroyed it. Yeah, that would have been, wouldn't have been very nice, would it? No, so it's, I'm glad they didn't really. Yeah, such a gorgeous place. And also they were talking about, uh, they're talking about building a, a road right through the middle, which again would have destroyed it, but hopefully that won't happen.
we have a bridge. Apparently this beautiful thing here uh, just carried a lane across the railway. But when we go through, just on the other side is the Greenside Tunnel. Just having a brew on the edge of the cutting. Darren's very kindly and rather civilly brought some uh, tea along with him. Yorkshire tea. Don't spit it out. No, it's good. It's good brew. Now I know what you're saying, because I know you. <laughs> right, you're saying, why don't you go in the tunnel? Well, the intention was never actually to go in the tunnel. As you saw, if you noticed, it was full of um, those twirly sort of like metal things on top. It's full of um, anti-vandal paint. Mm. And we just wanted to have a walk up the, uh, the embankment and have a look at the tunnel to be honest with you. So today, the intention was never to go inside the tunnel. Patrick Dickinson would have done it. He would have done, but he's twice the man that I will ever be. I mean, I mean. <laughs> and yeah. they brought me ladder anyway. Anyway, so where's next? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna venture round to a Moravian settlement called Fulnick, which is just round the corner from here. Moravian settlement, so there's one of those in Manchester um, that I've actually never been to, believe it or not. So we'll go and have a look at this one. So, I'll have me... well, while we're there, go on. there might be a sneaky little uh, miniature railway that we can see as well. You can't promise things that ain't gonna happen. No. Don't ever say I don't, don't get you in any tunnels. Nice little uh, miniature railway. You better tell me down the path because I don't know if we're supposed to be here, but it's quite beautiful, isn't it? We're doing no harm. Miniature railway there. Somebody spent a lot of time and effort doing this. Quite beautiful. There you go, little model railway for you. Yeah, we think the owners, do we think it was somebody that owned the house and he's died or something? Yeah, apparently he died and the house was up for sale, so it's just left, Right. which is a shame. So I know you like tunnels, so I thought I'd show you a model railway tunnel because we can't win the green side tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, crack on, let's go and look at this Moravian settlement. Just now. So this Moravian settlement is called Fulneck and it was established in 1744. It's named, after, uh, it's named in German after a town in northern Moravia in the Czech Republic. So it's quite beautiful here. And one thing that strikes me the most is it's very, very quiet. Proper tucked away, isn't it? It's really quiet. <laughs> uh, Moravian settlement. So I'll get you some dates and I'll give you a brief history on a voiceover um, and we'll see if we can find out a little bit more about it but if you wanted to live somewhere quiet this is the place because it's very very quiet here a very nice tea shop and a museum well worth a visit if you're traveling near Bradford Fullneck Moravian Settlement
So I've just scrambled down to the riverbank. This is the river air, and I wanted to show you that aqueduct there. Um, this is called Dowley Gap Aqueduct. And guess who built and designed it? Our friend Mr. Brindley, James Brindley. I think there's a date on it of the 1700s, but I'll drop it in, I'll find out properly, drop it in down below. What a beautiful thing it is. Um, what's the canal above it? Leeds Liverpool. Leeds Liverpool Canal. Absolutely fantastic. And similar to Clifton Aqueduct in a way, and similar to uh, Ringley Bridge. Um, so obviously a, a formula repeating here, but it's absolutely fantastic. Look at this. So we're just off the River Air, which is behind the camera. I'll just show you then the uh, the weir that was obviously constructed because we're in a little bit of a mill race here. Look where I am. Um, but this thing looks like it was some kind of water uh, wheel turbine thing, but it was horizontal rather than a vertical one. So obviously the water's come off the river behind, turned something here, and then it's headed on that way and probably ran back to the river. Fantastic little find. Um, Hurst Mill. Hurst, New Hurst Mill. New Hurst Mill apparently. What was it? Uh, 1700s. What did uh, it do? Worsted spinners. Worsted spinners. I've come across that word before. Wool well, I just started uh, wool cleaning apparently, Darren's telling me. So I just thought I'd drop this in because we're obviously walking around um, and looking at all the features. He's saying, oh, we'll just go up here. There's a remains of a waterway. Oh, there's an old mill race here. Because he knows what I like, you see. Well, this is fantastic. We're in the, um, this is a beautiful place, it's called Saltaire and it's a bit of an enclave just outside the city of Bradford. I hope I'm getting this right. Anyway, we're not far from Bradford, this is Saltaire and it's one of those places where there was a mill owner, Sir Titus Salt and he was one of those radicals because what he did was he provided well for his workers he built them homes he built them this sort of village if you like he looked after them he had two rules rule number one you must go to church and you must be quite pious and religious rule number two you mustn't drink and there's a pub just down here and i'll show you the title of it or i'll show you the name of it and uh I think it's quite good. Anyway, Saltaire, never been before. The place is brilliant. Lots of Yorkshire stone about. See that building behind me? So we'll have a whistle stop tour around here. It's a bit like a whistle stop tour of uh, Yorkshire, this isn't it, Darren? Darren's brought us on a whistle stop tour of Yorkshire. What more could you want? I've got him for a day. I'm trying to get everything in. Yeah, and I've just had the uh, fish and chips as well. It was quite good as well, you know. Uh, fish cake, chips, and gravy. But I didn't show it you because. Uh, I got rather messy. Anyway, let's crack on with the video. I've seen the big chimney down here. We need to go down and look at the mill and the chimney. Let's go and have a look round. So Sir Titus Salt had this place uh, built. He built the main mill, Salt's Mill, in 1853. The man himself died in 1876, but he was a philanthropist and he provided for his workers bath houses, hospitals, arms houses, churches, a park. Salt's Mill now houses the David Hockney Art Gallery and quite a few other businesses as well. So this is quite beautiful, this is the uh, Leeds Liverpool Canal, apparently, and the architecture on the mill is amazing, look at that. I think it goes so far to beat some of the uh, Manchester mills, that beautiful tower up there. Apparently, what Sir Titus Salt dealt with, I've just been told by Darren, 
It was alpaca wool. Is that alpaca, right? Yeah. All of it, or was some of it cotton? I think all or? of it. I think all of it. I think it eventually moved on to wool eventually, but it started as an alpaca mill that made alpaca clothing. Right. It's quite unique, apparently. He must have made a fortune because he built all this sort of village, and it's absolutely beautiful and ornate. Um, I'm completely blown away with the place. So if you've not been, Saltaire, just outside Bradford, you really should come and take a look down there. What's the river down there? That's the River Air. Oh, can we have a look at it? Yeah, we can go have a look. There's right. a weir down there as well. Oh, I can hear the weir, actually. And that would have provided probably a power source at one point for the mill, wouldn't it? That's a pub now, but apparently it was built by Sir Titus Salt as a little boathouse for all the workers to come down here by the river into the park, which he built. We're in the middle of a park, a wonderful park here. And he did all this for the workers. And uh, like I say, they could come to the boathouse, launch a boat onto the river and have a pleasure day. Now that is how you leave a legacy because it's still here. What a guy. I think I'm starting to quite like him, to be honest with you. I need to read more about him. But those were the radicals for me. Those were the people that changed things, that showed how it should be done. That sort of like tried to, they were quite idealists. And although it was probably done in the name of religion, it was done for the right reasons, wasn't it? He was a religious man and it came out for the good. It really did. I think this is a fantastic place. So thanks for bringing us, Darren. No problem. Eh? Anyway, where are we off to next? Well, we're heading up there into some deep woods to go look for something related to this village that no longer exists. And that's what we like. Looking for something gone and old. I'm actually genuinely stumped. I'm not just putting that face on. Right, well, let's crack <laughs> on with it. A tramway. We stood by a tramway. So we've just come out of the park, up the side of a hill, a tramway. Now I've looked for a few tramways in my time that have gone forever. What's this? This is the Shipley Glen tramway. So Shipley Glen? Shipley Glen, which is at the top. Right. So it's a lot of boulders at the top of the hill up here. Quite a big uh, thing in the Victorian days. It was at the fairground and they had roller coasters and things up here. And uh, the tramway used to take all the passengers all the way from the village up the hill to the top, save them walking. All right, so it was never, it weren't an industrial tramway. It no. was just for, for pleasure. Very. Yeah, Built by Titus again? No, not Titus, this one. This was a private owner. All ah, right. It's all right. to do with the fairground at the top of the site up here. Right. It was built in 1895. And it still runs? Still runs today. Only certain days now. It's weekends and the odd midweek special. We've walked from that park. For you, it's a jump cut. <laughs> I feel like you've walked me for miles. Well, this is quite incredible. Ooh, this is quite incredible because we're sat in the middle of a grand house or the remains or the ruins of a grand house. So this was Titus, Sir Titus Salt, who built the area and the mills just where we've been looking. This was his son's house. Yes, he, he built this for his son and his son only lived in it for uh, probably 20 years and then he died in the billiard room yes apparently i'm not joking so the the actual house was uh derelict for quite a t quite some time so what they did was they started dismantling the house and using a lot of the bricks and the stonework in the, to repair the mills down in saltaire so they started to sort of decimate the building so any dates on the house so it was built in 1872 and it was actually abandoned in 1930 and left derelict for about 20 years and then finally demolished like you see now in the 1950s. So yeah, like I said to Martin a minute ago, they tried to demolish the house in many ways by taking the, rub the uh, fixtures and fittings out of the house and the roof and things like that. But it just stood the test of time because it was well built. And then what they did was they used it in World War II for the Home Guard. They used it as for grenade practice so they could uh, chuck their grenades around. Again, that failed to destroy the building. So what they did was they had to bring the bulldozers in and finally raise it to the ground. And what you see today is what's left. So apparently another thing that Darren has just told me about this grand old house is that it was uh, difficult to sell 
it must have tried to sell it at some point but because of its reputation for many deaths yeah. they couldn't really sell it now it's like being a uh, I think I've been watching too much Netflix because it's like being <laughs> in, a, in a Netflix uh, thing because all around these remains of this house behind where we're sat here is what looks like a cellar I'll have to show you I'll have to show you honestly but there's more of it over there we'll go and take a look over there but just dressed stone everywhere and bricks the remains of a grand old house <laughs> Accessible. Shall we go in and take a look? Wonder if it's where the wine was kept. So let's go and have a look. Easier said than done. Definitely a cellar. Do you want to come and have a look? Oh, let's get the foot in right, bloody hell. <laughs> oh. But this is the way. Look at this. It goes on over there. Bit of a vaulted ceiling there, isn't it? light coming through up there so wow what a place yep. go for it Ooh, well must admit wow. I didn't expect that going in someone's cellar a bit difficult footing down there Dirty again, I'm gonna get done. Well that was good that weren't it? Nice bit of archway in there, someone's cellar. Amazing that that's all still there. You would never uh, never think this was here. You're gonna take a look Darren? Yeah. I'm so gonna... it's, it's quite cramped in there, so Darren's gonna go down there and take a look for his uh, channel. Gotta admit, <clears throat> I have to admit, this is a bit of a gem, isn't it? 
to find something like this. You know what I go on about? If we find one brick, I'll be happy. But there's so much of it here and it's scattered everywhere. Just pieces of dressed stone and everything. And uh, my God, um, it's just incredible, incredible. Um, I'm told apparently there's a mosaic floor somewhere in the woods. Yeah, if we're lucky enough to find it, but I, we don't know how long we've got to stay here. But if we can find that, I'll show it you. But what a gem. It's almost, it's very eerie to think that it was a rich person's house, a rich mill owner's son's house. And, um, you know, it was abandoned and then they tried to pull it down. They couldn't pull it down and then it got used for grenade practice. And then finally they raised it to the ground, but it's still here. All the pieces of stone are still here, cut stone and everything. There's a piece there I'll show you on the floor there. Look at this, look at this. Well, what a day. It was certainly a bit of a whistle stop of uh, Yorkshire, weren't it? Well, yeah. it was for me anyway, as a visitor. I, I kind of want to do a really upbeat, like, sign out to you, but I'm a little bit affected by the remains of the house that we've just seen. It's really kind of like, not in a bad way, I'm just kind of like, been affected by ghosts, all that stone and all that, those mosaics in the woods and everything. It's kind of, uh, kind of very poignant and somber without getting yeah. too poetic about it and what a place it's a beautiful uh, Wood beautiful is. woods isn't it yeah uh, we're just resting on an old fallen tree here so I'm gonna end the video there uh, I know it was a bit of a mishmash of lots of things but it was a day out basically and it was a day out down to this gentleman here Darren so I want to thank Darren check his channel out adventure me on YouTube he does lots of railway stuff don't you bit of everything canals all the stuff we like so check him out on youtube adventure me so anyway i'm going to sign out now thanks very much for watching take care and i shall see you very soon in the next video bye for now bye